Alrighty, thought I'd try this again. Going to uh, make myself a video and uh, see. I look a little do walk, little walk around right now. Show you what I got out here. See if I could switch the uh, camera here. It's a beautiful wintry day here in Northwest Washington. Thought I'd show you some of the stuff out in the weeds here. Got my Subaru based buggy made off of a, about a 98 Subaru Outback. Got my daughter's buggy. This one's made out of a, I think it was about an 88 GL wagon. Only turbo car I've ever had. This here is a Legacy, was a wagon. Bobbed wagon now. That's got uh, a locked up automatic transmission. Now we got this one here. This one's kind of, kind of heartless right now, no motor. So. And there's some other stuff. Sun's out today. My brother's truck. We're going to put a uh, dump bed on that. And a few other things. Here's the... Here's something that's coming up maybe this winter. This here is a Jeep Wrangler. Early one. And I'm going to use the frame and axles, springs, and the, not the body, but the floor of the body for my Uncle Jim tribute car. It's going to be a like a 30, mid, early 30s coupe with a straight six in it. Got the family car and the old family car back there. So, just a beautiful day here. This last year I haven't made much money. So, this year I got a new, new direction. What hasn't worked in the past, I'm gonna try to throw out and uh, my new idea is that uh, I'm going to develop some products, put them on my store, and um, make videos about them. So that's what I'm going to do. I got a fully equipped shop, I got the skills to run the equipment need to come up with some, some ideas and put them out there for people to buy so that's the plan and uh, here's one of my products right here Subaru winch bumper this bumper here is built off a of what, like a 96, 98 Legacy Outback. I'm gonna make a few others, make them fit other things. Also this here, this is my go-kart, fully suspended. Fully suspended go-kart. Got the big single cylinder Honda in it. Fully caged, full suspension. I want to make some kits. One of the kits will be the total thing. Okay, in kit form. I want to make uh, a kit that's this rear thing here. The rear drive, rear swing arm, the rear um, sprockets and gear setup. And another kit I want to make is this right here. Front suspension. Front hubs. Do custom axles. I could do swing arm axles. 
I could do straight axles. So that's uh, that's some of the products I want to develop and put out there for sale. I mentioned to you the uh, Uncle Jim tribute race car. Well, here it is. This is a this is a coupe. It's a uh, from what I could figure out, it's a Willie's Knight. And uh, not sure what year. Early 30s, maybe 30, 31, 32, something like that. But it's something I picked up. Yeah, the thing was smashed. It looked like, I don't know, it was in a barn and the roof fell in on it or something. Anyway, when I got it, this point here was down right about here. And right through here, this was buckled out and smashed. Um, anyway, a few years ago, I straightened most of it out. And this last summer, we straightened out most of this. It had some pretty good wrinkles in it. So, anyway, that's something I want to throw together just for fun in remembrance of my Uncle Jim. So, yeah. Now this here's a buggy I built in high school. This thing's over 40 years old. And um, today, I dug it out back there. And I think that's what I'm gonna work on today. So, that engine there may end up in it. That's a 750 Suzuki. And this front end came off a Chinese quad, like a 160 or something. Need to cut it in half. Just bring it out wider. That width right there. And attach it. Attach it to the frame. This here is an old mini sprint axle. I got from uh, friend of mine years ago 20 plus years ago set it up on here anyway that's going to come off this here's uh i don't know this is a kawasaki i think it's like a 230 250 260 something like that anyway it was a good running motor it was kind of gutless for this machine needed needed more power um, before this motor i had a 250 Two stroke in it. Last time I rode it, chain, the uh, jack shaft broke, chain flew off, and bound up in there. It's probably been 30 years ago. So, all right, I think the first thing we need to do is tear off some parts, pull this axle off, this brake. I uh, had it. Pull the motor out. See how far we get here. So, put these used up golf cart tires on there about a year or so ago just to keep this off the ground. So, all right, let's see what we got here. I think I'll put you on time lapse. So, change the settings here.
All righty. Used about every every tool I got in the toolbox, but I got the external starter un unhooked. Got the motor mounts all loosened up. Coil unhooked. The uh, clutch actually yeah, is that the clutch? No, the brake. Might be a clutch cylinder from a car. I'm not sure. Most of these are car parts. Cut that off. And now, I think the engine's ready to move out. Yeah, engine's ready to move out. So you might want to see that. So I'll put you back here. All right, let's yank. Okay, yank this motor out of there. We can get it out of there. See what mode we're on. Yep, we're on the right mode. Things are rolling around on me. Rolling around. Where's my dry bar at? That was just a few minutes ago. Keep thinking I should put gloves on. I don't want to get my fingers smashed, but uh, yeah, I haven't done that. So oh, there's the pry bar. Let's see if we can get it out of the engine cradle. Put that bolt bracket. There we go. Okay, get the gloves, the old trusty, trusty weld gloves. I like to use my old set for picking up stuff. Use my old, my new gloves for welding. Okay, it's up there a ways, so we get it out of there. All right, come on, out of there. Yeah. All right. Oh, I want to set it back on there. Right? heavy motor. It's lived in there for, I don't know, 30 years. I built this thing in high school when I was a senior, 1982. It had a rear engine. That engine I put in there to race a Hannigan, which is probably, I don't know, 1990? Yeah, 30 years ago. So it's been in there a while. Let's uh, let's look at the fine, fine, uh, fine engineering that uh, a young Scott built years ago. All right, all right, all right. Let's check this out. So I designed this cage. Well, the whole thing at first, anyway after the Honda FL250 Odyssey. Okay, let's check this out. So that brake lever is out of a car, probably a Datsun or a Honda or something. Check out this, this gas pedal. Now that's unique, huh? Check that out, huh? That's a quality unit. Now the way that was set up to work, over the edge here, 
throttle cable went in there and held on by those those keeper keepers right there. And then um, then right here there's a hose clamp held the held the wire. Zoom zoom zoom. So anyway, that's the throttle. And it looks like we made the crossbars with water pipe. Because when I built this in high school, I used tubing. One and a quarter by, I'm not sure, 095, 012, something like that. But then when I did this modification, 10 years later, this was water pipe. Check this out though. Now there, now that's, there's a, there's a piece of fine engineering there. That there is a right angle drive, um, Black and Decker, I think it's called the Timber Hog or something. Anyway, there's an old drill that I got free because it's broken. And just used the gearbox. Goes over there. And that drag link I built out of some parts from a snowmobile. Check out these little ends, these little and these are from snowmobile. Those are cool, huh? Same with this. This is a snowmobile, snowmobile end piece. And I put my own rod in there. And uh, like I said earlier, this this front axle used to live on a mini sprint. It was red at one time. It was red when I got it. And when it lived on the mini sprint, it hooked to um, some of these brackets, and there's a hole there. I think that was for the pan hard. And whatever was here, I took off and I added this. This is kind of a unique front end. It's got uh, one ball joint there on the frame. And then it comes to here, bounces up and down, and then it just has a rod there. Now this thing had way too much sway, as I remember. And that's why you see no no um, springs because it just swayed too much so you gotta realize i threw this together on a junk um, so anyway got the motor out and um these rear hubs were built out of um that portion there with the spindle going on the inside can't really see it i think that was a ford Ford Conaline van rear and there's the bolt pattern on the from the Ford it would have had a probably what fly bolts maybe then I welded these tabs on for the sprocket and I welded this this plate and this ridge in and I made it in high school and so it was one of those projects I able to learn how to run the lathe yeah so that's how this was set up. This was set up with three change, chains, one that went to there. And then originally inside that was a um, jack shaft, went across. And then the engine sat back here. There was a Honda 350 street bike engine. And then this was, had a sprocket there. It went to the engine. So three chains. Yeah, complicated, but hey, it worked. So. Thought I'd, thought I'd show you that. Now the next thing I think I'll do is take this front axle off. So the two shocks and the two pivots. These are off cars. That's probably a car. Uh, I don't know. There's another one over there. You can tell what that is. Probably a, um, something to do with steering. Yeah. Probably a tie rod. A couple tie rod ends there. Alright, so... There you go. Now I'm going to work on the axle. All right. Let's see what we got here. That looks like about a 17. There we go. 17. Look at that. All right. There we go. These would have been shocks off of uh, a motorcycle. Okay. 
juicy on it. There we go. How about this one? Oh yeah, that one's good. It's got a uh, nut spacer and a, another washer on it. This one here, looks like it has a chunk of the car. That one probably has a paper to hold. It's probably part of the suspension. Let's see what we got here. Too small. Yeah, that one looks like it's just gone through a piece of flat plate. It's just a little flat bar, with some spacers. The other side looks like a chunk of the original car front suspension pieces. That's off. That's loose. Uh oh, get this. Take this little steering arm off. But I don't have any battery operated tools. I got a half inch impact driver. That's electric. That's okay. We'll get the job done. Came out. We can stop the spline shaft now. Okay. We need to jam the screwdriver in there. The whole thing's been out there, right? For over 40. Got the Peterson Irwin the vice grips. Some people call them locking pliers, but they've always been vice grips to me. Up here in the northwest Washington. Try to pull this cotter key out. A lot of rust and grime in there. Alright, see what I got. You can't even see what I'm doing. That's a terrible, terrible, terrible angle. There you go. I've been talking to myself this whole time. Anyway, I was trying to pull out a, out a cotter key. And that's about all I got. It was just the, just the end piece. I wiggled for a while. Let's see if it'll break. Little cuts. Okay, here's my impact. Impact driver. There it goes. Ah, ah. All right. We need more strength on that impact driver. All right. Got the more powerful impact driver. I just beat on the end of the wrench here. See what that'll do. Remember, we're trying to cut. Cut a cotter key at the same time. What happened there? All right, it's moving. It's, uh, let's see what's moving here. Put some more juice on it. More looby loo. Okay, looks like it's working. Looks like the nut 
was able to cut the car key. All right, nut is off. Okay. Now I'm going to count on the, the boss. Hey, you might want to see this. Okay. Get you off the holder here. Okay, so. All right, we're down here somewhere. All right, this is where we're at so far. Here's the, uh, here's what I've been working on. And, uh, okay, here's what I've been working on. There's the, there's the cut cotter pin. There's the nut. Now I'm going to tap on this boss right here. Bang it pretty good. And then uh, that'll deform, it'll shock this area a bit. Maybe that tapered shaft will fall out. So, so we're going to try next. On the end a bit, which I knew would mushroom it over, but I doubt if I'll use that again. So if I do make something like this, I'll probably take a nicer one. Okay, what do we got left? We got uh, about two nuts or two bolts. Timer's still going. Timer's still going. That's good. Okay, we got this one here. What we got here? Oh yeah, it's moving. Okay. We got here. here we go. Let gravity take over here in a second. It's on the ground. All right. Let me show you. What we got over here all right that thing's on the ground okay it's always fun to look at how i built things you know 30 40 years ago you know this light blue paint is the original paint i painted on the, the machine in 1982 and then when I remodeled it with the front engine, went with this, this blue here, metallic. So, okay, I'm gonna clean up, put away all my tools, and get the vacuum cleaner out. All right, this thing's getting lighter. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next. I think I might, uh, you know, I might just attack these rear arms. Because uh, then if those were off, now that that's off and the engine's off, this thing would be lighter enough I can move around. And maybe end up on that bench. Okay. I think I should put my hat back on. It's getting cold out here. This is done. Got Stanley anti vibe. Now that was a good score. I picked up a go kart a year or so ago, and 
That came with it. I'm not sure why. I use it every week. Okay, gonna go way over here to the pillow box. All right, I'm coming back now. Okay, what else we got here? We got this. Always got to have a crowbar around to, to do work. This is handy too. This one's good if you got like a nail in a board that you can't really get at. This will get at it. So. Now this is a handy tool. Check out that punch. Now that won't get her done. Check out that one. Woo wee! That's a long one. I did that to get the, uh, the motor mount bowl right there. Okay, I'll be back. I'm gonna go over here for a bit. Twenty things away. Still working. Still working. See all that, but some of the tools ended up in the box. Some not so, not not quite. Probably not going to use any of that junk I took off. I, I doubt anything I have removed will go back on here. But uh, throw it in the box over there. Actually, that wasn't the box. That was that was the ground. Check out this exhaust pipe I made years ago. It's hooked up to the motorcycle engine. Looks like I just made it in a water pipe. Took a chunk of a fitting and cut it. Ooh, that's got a welded seam right there. Now, that, that, now that's that's up down there. Got the 90. And look, check out that muffler. Looks like it was an aftermarket, like on a two-stroke something or other. But seen better days. I like how I made this arm too. Now that's a piece of flat bar. But what I like about it is how I shortened it. This cutter in the middle. Actually, no, it's not even cut in the middle. Looks like that was an end at one time. It looks like I had a hole in it. That's another one. Who knows? Who knows what these are from? That goes on the ground. All right, let's find some parts. Some nuts and bolts. It's interesting tearing this thing apart. Most of the nuts and bolts were mismatched. You know, you'd have a bracket with two bolts on it, and one might be a 12 millimeter head metric, the other one would be a 13 millimeter half inch. It's just interesting. Take these bolts off here before they fall off on the ground. It's fun to look at the stuff that you made years ago. You look at it and go, ooh, really? That's how I did that, huh? But you know, when you built it, you built it the best you could with the equipment and the skills that you had at that time, you know? So when I, when I, the parts that I'm gonna build and put on this now, I'll do it a little different. I got better equipment, I got many years of knowledge so all right i think i'm ready to vacuum but i'm gonna hold off i'm gonna spin this around and work on the back i'll leave this here for nuts and bolts so let's give this a spinner like my friend jeff duffield used to say ichi deska i think that means i think that means turn around and uh in Japanese. Not sure. Ichi desuka. So we're going to do a little Ichi desuka here. Uh oh, you can't see what I'm doing here. Woo -wee. A little better. Okay. Is that better? Somewhat. So we're spinning around. Spin, spin. Spin, spin. There we go. Let's, uh, let's work on this. This one's got a, a wheel on it. These I just put on it, I don't know, a few months ago, just so it would roll around outside and stuff. So what are we looking at here? 
All right, well, let's move this around here and see what we got here. Take a look at that area. Okay, pull that off. Oh, lug nuts are loose. Yeah, one is. Okay. Okay, gotta go way over here to get the lug wrench. Woo! -wee. Coming back. Almost there. All right. Check that out, huh? That's what we call a star wrench. That's a long one. I probably had that thing. I don't know how long I've had that, but I might have stole it from my dad when I was a kid. He had a long time. Originally, when I made these hubs, there were four bolts. I don't know if you see the holes, but there's a hole, there's a hole, there's one, and then there's one kind of there. It was a four-on-four -four pattern, like on a golf cart. And uh, when I went to pick up the tires and wheels, I remember doing this. The ones I picked up had a five-bolt. And so by that time, I was already on a school. I didn't have access to the lathe or anything. So these are just kind of all jerry-rigged on here. Whatever bolts I had. Some are long, some are short. I did this, did this with a cutting torch and an AC, AC buzz box welder. That part anyway. But yeah, originally those were, those were four bolt, four bolt hub. Now the one I put on, put back on here, the system I'm making, um, I'll probably go with the four on four, just because it's the same as golf cart, and those things are uh, those things are easy to easy to find. All right, I think we got that. Now if we look at this, if we look at this here. The way this works is there's a pivot here. And there's a pivot here, it goes to a Y-shaped arm here, and this is the swing arm that pops up and down. And then the shocks, that's the shocking motion. And then this has a, this you can adjust back and forth, there's slotted holes to tighten the chain. Now this, originally when I made it, the power came through here, there was a jack shaft with a sprocket. That's why it's got a hole in it, right there. All right, so it looks like if I take take that cotter pin off and that bolt, I might be able to pop this out with a hammer. So let's look at doing that. I might even just cut this off. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'll just I think I'll just cut that off right there. We'll work on these bolts first. All right, my guess is this is a 19. No, that's uh, not a 19. I brought a 17 off. No, smaller than 17. I was thinking three quarters because it looks like, yeah, this end, no. So that one end is uh, about an 18, and this end is less. This is, uh, yeah. 15 or so. How about over here? What do I got over here? Ah! What do we got over here? This one right there. Oh yeah, that one's even smaller. Oh, that one's a carriage bolt. That's nice. Okay. You gonna move on us? Whoa! Motorcycle fell over. Big bike down. You see that? Yeah, bike fell over. We get a workout today. Glad it didn't go all the way over. Here we go. Ah! 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 
There we go. Okay. Go back. Stay there, buddy. Okay, let's back up. Let's see what else. Okay, what were we doing? We were gonna work on this bolt. Let's, let's uh, come right over here. Come over here and look at this with me. We're down in here. Oh yeah, you can see it right there. Okay, I'm thinking that's a 9 16 Yep. 9 16 <laughs> Now that's a carriage bolt. And the head is turning. I'm going to get some vice grips. Okay. Let's see. Ah, there we go. Oh, baby. Ah, that is tight. Now, here's a little trick you could do. That wrench is too short. Put another one right on top of it. Like that. See that? The old extendo wrench. I'm probably going to get a better view of that. There you go. Now let's see what happens. Okay. Vice grip's moving. Uh-oh. Vice grip fell off. Let's try that again. All right. I think I'm set up. I'm going to be running the Deluxe Spark Thrower 2000. Here we go.